Options. There we go. Okay. So go ahead and start. Three, two, one, go. So this is Sylvester and Tweety in KG Capers. It is a uh, platformer on the Sega Genesis. And it's, you know, it's a game. It feels a lot like playing Quidditch without a broom. Every time you hit uh, Tweety, he advances to the next checkpoint on his list of preset checkpoints. On top of the door, on top of the picture, up in the attic. So ideally, you want to hit him as many times as you can so that you can skip unnecessary checkpoints and head directly towards the end. So you can make him go to the next checkpoint just by getting too close to him where he feels nervous. But so long as you just get kind of close to him at all times. You can keep advancing the checkpoints. This is a game by Tech Magic, so you get cool little props that you can use to uh, help you finish levels. Very similar to uh, Pink Panther in Pink Goes to Hollywood. Hi, Spike. Bye, Spike. Quit punching me, Spike. Quick little smack there, puts him up where I want him. So I want him to be on that third checkpoint there over on the clothesline. The enemies in the game, like uh, Spike, the uh, Red Cat, and Granny, all will chase you down, and you don't really have a good way to like fight them off at all. You have to pick up power-ups to either make them run away from you, I missed. So now we're on the train level, and Spike's here, hooray. So whatever level uh, that you go to, uh, like this train level for example, the presence or absence of Spike in certain parts is totally RNG, and unfortunately that's unfavorable for him to be right there. You don't want to fall in between the trains. If you fall in between the trains, you'll wind up falling all the way back to the beginning of of the uh, the beginning of the level, and that's a huge waste of time. We absolutely need this like tucked far out of the way uh, pogo stick. It is impossible to beat this level without it because you cannot get up here onto the double decker cars. So 
So yeah, hitbox is a, a kind of a suggestion in this game. Like whether or not you're actually going to successfully like hit Tweety with your claw attack is almost random. It's extremely inconsistent. Ah, I missed my opportunity. Now I have to go down there. Oh, that's horrible. That's a huge time loss. So, that's okay though. Ah. So, true to the style of Looney Tunes cartoons featuring Sylvester and Tweety, to solve puzzles, you need to stack a bunch of uh, objects and things that you have around the room. Uh, up as as high as they'll go. Alright, so he went to the next cart. Oh no! We go somehow forward over to the next area and... Oh, by the way, there's Tweety. Alright, I think that will advance him to the last cart, which should be... Nice. So. Alright. Nope, he's still in this one. Okay. Yeah, this is the last card. So here we use Hopper to help us get to areas. Such as the final area of the cart. Now I got you. I thought I saw a pudding cane. So we want to let Tweety fly as far over here as we can and not fall off like that. So we can land a few solid hits on him there. Unfortunately, I did not land a few solid hits. I got some a little later though. But back alley blues, you're going to be um, moving around a lot in really weird ways. Like it's an extremely non-linear map. Where Tweety goes is not random, but it is difficult to track. And unfortunately. Sometimes if you fall, you actually have to go pretty far out of your way to come around and find him again. If you get too close to Tweety without hitting him, take fall damage in this game um, if Red the cat attacks you. Uh, if you step on fire or step in electricity or touch a steam vent or anything like that, you take damage. Fire, cactuses, and steam vents actually uh, Oh my god, I'm stuck. Okay. Alright, so we're on our way to the last area here. Good. Oh no. Okay. There we go. So yeah, fire, steam, cactuses, they don't trigger your iframes, so if you stand on them, they will just eat your health. Moving on to Hide and Shriek. If you're familiar with the cartoons, this is the episode where uh, Tweety drinks uh, Hide formula in Dr. Jekyll's lab and uh, he becomes a gigantic bird.
I'm waiting for an elevator, which I apparently, like, wanted the absolute wrong time to go after. Anyway, um, if you wait long enough, uh, Tweedy will turn into, uh, Big Twingus. And it takes a long time to, uh, do anything about him if you don't have any, uh, shrinking potions. So you have to run around and collect shrinking potions, otherwise they'll just eat you on site like that. No! Oh, I hate missing that platform. That is the worst thing that can happen. You just lose so much time. Alright, so we move up here. One of the things you can do um, to help speed things up. is, uh, there we go, is make sure you bring Tweety closer to the end before you transform him. So this is Hide and Shriek 2, it is the worst design level in the game, period. Um, it actually, at first glance, appears to have no way up to the upper level, but it's just uh, a, uh, a difficult platforming section right here. And you have to jump up on this weird dial that doesn't look like you can jump on it. Anyway, when we move around through this lab where we're really tiny, um, we want to make sure to uh, to collect as many shrinking potions as possible and always be looking for a chance to throw one at Tweety when he comes to get you. Ooh, nice double checkpoint hit. That's awesome. So every time you hit Tweety and he loses some feathers, um, it puts him that much closer to the end goal. And so we want to get him there as quickly as possible. Nice, we got one more checkpoint out of him. So now we just have to drop through here, and we caught him. Ooh, that gold split. Mm. So, in this level, the task manages to somehow get, like, Tweety to go to the very last checkpoint, like, immediately upon hitting him that first time. And that's something I wish I knew how to do, because I would totally do it. Hello, breakfast. So this is Oceans of Trouble. It is the last level in the game. Occasionally, you'll see me pull out binoculars. Ah, oh, hi, Red. And when I pull out binoculars, it's because I'm trying to figure out where Tweety is. Um, that's called the Tweety Scope. Okay. Here, have it. No? Okay. Don't want the fish? Fine, you get the mallet. I do not want to push that twice. 
All right. You're officially a jerk. And we're gonna get rid of you now. Enjoy your fish. Now go away. Anyway, so that's a very terrible start. Not my typical start for uh, Oceans of Trouble. Granny, please. I'm just trying to climb up here. Leave me alone. Anyway, if you keep uh, Tweety on screen for too long, um, he'll fly away. So if you're going to go for strikes against Tweety, you've got to go really quick. This game gives you extra lives like they're candy, so taking damage isn't really too serious. But one thing you can do um, to avoid getting hit, you can hide in things like the the lamps uh, in uh, Domestic Devils or the uh, trash cans in the alley. Nice. Landed a good hand, a good uh, smack on him right there. So we're coming up on time here. Time is when uh, I get to the very bottom of the boat. And Tweety flies down to me, which for me does not make any sense why Tweety would do that, other than to be just kind of a stupid last puzzle to really annoy you. And so this is it right here, so time's coming up. Time. Now I got you. Now I got you. So that's time. Not my PB, because I wasted way too much time in Oceans of Trouble, but I was doing good until then.